Hey, everybody. I have William Schofield on the line with us. Uh, William is the creator of the Carnivore Shredding Program, How to Lose Fat and Build Muscle on the Carnivore Diet. But he's so much more than just the carnivore uh, guy on Instagram. If you guys I follow William, you probably saw his his six-pack this morning. He's rocking it on the keto. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's also the co-host of the Better, Stronger, Faster podcast with Chris Bell, which is super cool. And he is also, as we all affectionately know him, the Red Power Ranger. <laughs> he's the star of the TV show Power Rangers Ninja Steel on Netflix and Nickelodeon. Um, and he is a two-time kids, two-time kids choice awards nominee and a motivational speaker for young millennials. And uh, William, you really are so inspiring. So I'm really excited to jump into this with you and talk not only about like your nutrition transformation, but also just your life transformation and everything you're about. So um, let's start with, can you like kind of tell us your upbringing and what led you to this point and um, like the personal transformation that you've had in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, Tara, thanks so much for having me on today. Of um, course. And and I gotta say, after a bio like that, like I, I even want to meet this guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so impressive. No. And how no, old are I'm, you, William? You're twenty five four? I'm I'm twenty four, yeah. And yeah. I'm I'm just kind of being sarcastic because I think a lot of the time <laughs> when, when people have these bios at the beginning of a podcast, sometimes it, it really, really builds them up. But yeah. I'm literally just like a, a completely normal average person. And when I tell you a bit about my background, it'll make sense. So um, I, I come from, you know, family of six. We, you know, we live in Modesto, California, which is where I was born and raised, um, spent my whole life there. And, you know, it was just a very, very um, close, close knit upbringing. So my mother did an incredible job at raising us and she instilled in us a lot of confidence. Um, we didn't have a ton of money, uh, didn't have that much money to go around. But, you know, we took academics pretty seriously and I found, you know, a huge passion for athletics when I was very young. So pretty much growing up, um, I really focused on school and sports. But when I got into my teen years, I always kind of had a vision of myself getting into acting. And that was something that I really, really wanted to do. But it didn't seem possible to me because I thought that, you know, you had to have a Basically, you had to have connections or you had to have something going for you to get into that industry. Mm -hmm. So fast forward until when I get into college and I'm studying economics and I'm getting ready to, you know, get my normal career going and to uh, to live a nine to five kind of life. And I was doing these internships and I just did not like it. Um, I didn't feel like my talents were fully being used. And I would look around to the people that were sitting in the cubicle in front of me or behind me. And I would look at them and I would just see it in their eyes. Like they were not happy at all. At, at some point, mm -hmm. something inside of them had shut off that, you know, was perhaps the thing that gets you up early in the morning and it gets you excited and you're ready to pursue goals. That thing was completely off in everyone I saw around me. And, you know, wow. I, I don't want to uh, generalize to all office jobs, all nine to fives, all, you know, perhaps normal career paths, if you can call them that. Um, I don't want to generalize because it's different for everyone. But I remember thinking, man, I really, really want to work on my own goals. I, I don't want to work on a CEO's goals. I, I really don't feel passionate about that. There are things inside of me that I want to express to the world. And after doing my last internship, every summer I would do one of these. Um, after doing my last one junior year, I basically made a deal with myself. I said, look, you got one year left to college and you are never going to work an office job again. So with this last year of college, before you get thrust out into you know the real world, take this entire year. And I set a goal for myself. I said, by the end of that year, I was going to star in a major TV show. And it, it was completely ludicrous, but I, I felt like mm -hmm. in, it was somehow possible. I felt like there was a path to get there. And if I tried enough things and if I worked hard enough at this, if I took enough shots, I was going to sink one of those shots. I figured something was going to happen and it was going to work out somehow. Like there was a way. <laughs> I just felt like there was a way. Um, so that last year of college, I really, really pushed myself. And that was where I learned all about morning routines. And I learned all about the process of goal setting. I learned about self-belief, about visualization about going for things. And um, it was a really transformative experiment, uh, experience for me 
because I had pretty much just sort of, you know, sleepwalked through my entire college experience up until that point. What was it that inspired you? Were there certain books or people that helped you learn those skills and kind of shift your mindset on that? It was all of those things, but it actually yeah. started with um, a dream that I had, uh, you oh, know, wow. one night where I actually, I, I had a dream of myself becoming an actor and, and of being successful at it. So once I had that dream, I felt that that was a divine message that I needed to go for it. So that mm. pretty much waking up from that is when I wrote it down and decided that this wow. was something, you know, I was going to plant my flag and go for it. Um, but as soon as I made that decision, I kind of thought to myself, like, well, I don't really know anything about achieving a goal. And for some reason, instead of studying acting and things like that, the first thing I studied was how do you become successful? How do you achieve a goal? And I would mm -hmm. basically study people that had set and achieved crazy goals in different areas of their life. I would read biographies. Mm -hmm. I would read a lot of personal development books. And, and it's all the typical suspects. You know, anybody that's read per, uh, personal development books or inspiring biographies, uh, you know, I was reading the exact same thing. So th there weren't any, you know, books outside of the norm that I was reading. Um, it was, mm -hmm. you know, The Alchemist. It was Think and Grow Rich. It was... Um, I love to read mm -hmm. Arnold's biography, Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography, because I love that he mm -hmm. could set and achieve goals in different areas of life. So I was trying Seriously? to study his system a lot when I was younger. Um, cool. Yeah, so it was a lot of different books and a lot of different people. Awesome. And I love that you pointed out there. Um, well, first it came from the inside and it came from like the divine guidance that I feel in my life. And I think that's so key. And I think we're aligned on those things, you know, like it's like you, it was it, because then it comes from, it's not just this selfish desire of like, I want this. It's no, I I'm called to this. Um, and that fuels a fire like deep, deep inside where you know that because you're being divinely guided on your path, that you're going to be supported on that path if you just put in the work and you listen to that intuition. So yes. um, thanks for sharing that. That's amazing. It, it also okay, keep it changes. <laughs> keep going. It, it, it also um, it changes the way that you view obstacles, too, because if you feel that you are on this divine journey and you know that you're being guided to do these things, you become more receptive to intuition and to the voice of God in your life. You become a lot more mm -hmm. resilient when you face obstacles. And you're also more willing to look for the lessons in those obstacles rather yes. than be derailed from your progress. And I think a big part of it is you also don't feel super happy if you're not following that call. Um, you know, everybody's got their own mm -hmm. religious persuasions. For me, um, as a Christian, I would often think about the story of Jonah and the whale. And I would think about how, you know, Jonah was basically trying to avoid what God told him to do. And anytime I felt that fear inside of me, and I knew there was something I was supposed to do, and whether it was I was afraid of getting out of my comfort zone, or I was simply afraid of putting in hard work towards something, I would always tell myself, like, look, you're going to end up in a whale if you don't <laughs> if you don't do this. Like, oh, you, have, wow. you have to go for this. Do not walk away from God's call in your life. So that kind of always pushed me in that direction. Um, and it also caused wow. me to view any obstacles that I would face as like, well, awesome. Okay, God is sending me exactly what I need at this moment to learn this lesson. There's no other way I could have mm -hmm. gotten around this. And I will not get over this until I learn the lesson. Um, so, yeah, you know, that that perspective of going from the inside and it's not just like, you know, I want to be a successful person because I've got a chip on my shoulder and I have to prove to my parents that mm -hmm. I'm a worthwhile individual. Mm -hmm. I have to prove to to girls <laughs> or to society or to whatever it happens to be. If you go that route, um, I think the whole journey is just going to be a lot less fulfilling than it could be mm -hmm. than if you go with that seed inside of you that you can actually feel in your gut, you know, that thing that you've been thinking about since you were six years old, you know, the thing that people have ever since you were young, they've been saying, hey, you're really good at this, or you're really good at that. It, it I think it rec it's recurring. And you start to see signs of it at a young age, what that seed is inside of you. But for most people, it's such a ludicrous proposition that, you know, they bring it up a few times when they're young, and then somebody makes fun of them when they're in college or in high school, and they're like, yeah, right. You're going to start a cooking show or yeah, right. You're going to do this or that. And 
they sort of laugh at themselves too, and then they go get a normal job, and they pretty much let that seed wither up inside of them and die, which is really, yep. really sad. And I think that there's so much unexpressed and unfulfilled potential in our world. So all I've done is I've just swallowed that fear and decided, okay, I'm going to water that seed inside of me and see where it takes me. And it's taken me to a lot of different places. It's taken me to $8 in my bank account. And it's also taken me to <laughs> flying all over the world and being able to pursue my dreams. So um, by no means is it, you know, all sunshine and rainbows once you start to pursue it. Oh, man. Insights. These are amazing. This is so beautiful. Okay, keep keep going. So where did where did you go from here? So you you have achieved what and actually at what age did you start doing the acting thing? When did this like actually come to fruition for you that you uh, fulfilled this vision that you had this dream? Yeah, so I How long I, ago was that this would have been when I was Oh, boy, I got to think I think I was about 21 years old. So junior year of college, I would have been 21. So that would have been about okay. three, three and a half years ago now. Um, and basically, so I, I wanted to do this in high school, but I had severe, severe acne and that significantly um, impacted my confidence levels. I literally could not look people in the eye. And I, I've recently shared these pictures on my on my social media, but it was very yeah, severe sorry. acne. And um you know, I, I just pretty much thought at that point in my life, like, look, you're going to have to pick something else to do with your life because, you know, you're not going to oh, end wow. up on the big screen. Like you're, you're going to have scars and this is going to be coming and going throughout your life. So, um, you know, it's probably better that you work behind the, the scenes and that you sort of abandon this pipe dream that you have. Um, oh man. But when I decided to go for it, the first thing I realized that I had to do was to figure my health out because I just knew that acne and that, you know, I, I just knew that that was an internal issue. I knew that it was health related. So that's kind of what got me so obsessed about health and fitness, um, you know, at that time. Now, when I made the decision to go for it, I was either 20 or 21 years old and I wrote that goal down. And here's what that whole process looked like. So I wake up in a, in a feverish feeling from this dream. It was almost like a lucid dream. And I saw everything laid out before me. I saw what would happen. I saw myself on a San Diego Comic-Con panel with a cast of other actors. I saw myself getting asked certain questions and I felt it. I felt inside somehow that I had put all of the work in and that the goal had been achieved. And it was really weird. It's, it's almost as if you're seeing the future in a way. Like there was something yeah. inside of me that said, this isn't a dream. This has actually happened, but now you need to actually walk the path. You need to take the steps to get there. But the destination has been achieved. And there are these verses in the Bible where um, I think God says, I go before you to create a path. And I thought, okay, well, that's exactly what this is. So now I have to suck it up and actually start putting the work in. So I woke up and I had like tears in my eyes and I just knew that it was real. So I wrote this thing down as wow. a goal. And this is the, man, this is the thing that I hope everybody gets right now. When you have that intuition, when there's something that you want to do and your current circumstances could not look any further from what your goal is, do not discount the goal. So when I woke up from mm -hmm. this dream, I had a lot of skin issues. I was not in shape. Um, you know, I was living on student loans and internships, but at the time I, I hadn't received my first checks for this internship. So for a month, I was trying to live off of about 15 bucks. And at one point, um, you know, I had to break it down to how many Pop-Tarts could I buy and top ramen? And then how many quarters did mm -hmm. I have for bus fare? So when I woke up from this dream, wow. I think I had right about eight bucks. Um, and most of it was in quarters in this little plastic cup. And I was um, wow. rooming in a one person room that was extremely tiny. And I was sleeping on the floor in like a little cot. I was in the corner um, wow. and there were two of us in that room. And every day I would be eating Pop-Tarts, I would be eating ramen, and I was wow. honestly kind of, I was a little bit depressed at that point in my life. Like I felt really uh -huh. down and discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had told myself that, you know, once I left for college, I would never ever go back home and, you know, sort of live under my parents' roof. And it wasn't because I don't <laughs> love my family, but it was because I wanted to prove to myself that, you know, I could leave the nest and that I could do this. 
So um, yeah. I was really toughing out that little period of my life. But when I had that dream, I didn't say to myself, you know, what are you crazy? Like, that's not possible at mm-hmm. all. Like, look, you're broke. Your skin's not great. You've never acted a day in your life. You have no experience. Like, that just doesn't happen. I didn't say that to myself. And the reason I didn't say that is because once I had seen the dream, I believed. Like, I couldn't imagine my life any right. other way. So I had to protect that dream. Um, so I wrote this goal down. And what I did was I wrote out a whole personal mission statement for myself about – it was basically about what I wanted my life story to be. So I wrote out this crazy life story for myself, all of these you know, huge accomplishments that I wanted to have. Um, you know, about the values that would matter most to me in life, about what I wanted my personal relationships to look like. I just tried to map out who I wanted to become. And then I broke down that major acting goal into quarterly goals, into monthly goals, into weekly goals. And then eventually I got that down to the daily level where I realized, okay, I'm going to have to get an agent. I'm going to have to build up a resume. I'm going to have to gain some experience, do acting classes. I'm going to have to um, get my appearance in order. So that's going to mean dropping body fat, clearing my skin up. Um, I'm going to have to create a morning routine for myself. I wrote down this huge list of things and it just grew and grew and grew over time. And once I had those daily goals, the first thing I did was I created the morning routine. And to this day, my morning routine is the thing that grounds the rest of my life. Like Everything else in my life is built on top of my morning routine. My business goals, you know, the stuff I work on every day, um, what I do with my social media content, acting goals, um, writing, all of that stuff starts with morning routine. And for me in college, what that looked like was 4 a.m., get up, journal, listen to something motivational, inspirational. I would make this vegan green smoothie because at the time I was vegan. Um, So I would make this green smoothie and I would drink that down. And then by about 4.30, head straight to the gym, work out until 5.30, go back home, shower, um, read five to 10 pages of whatever book I was on at the time. So it might've been seven habits of highly effective people. It might've been the compound effect. It might've been um, think and grow rich, anything like that. And then by about 6 a.m., I would, you know, just start working on homework and my different goals for the day that I had set up for myself. And this would continue on until about maybe 10 or 11 p.m. at night. Um, I did not sleep much that entire year. And I think that in the short term that that is okay. You know, if, if you're fueled by adrenaline and you have like a do or die goal that you really have to achieve and you've got a time limit on it, like that one year that I gave myself, I think you're okay. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't honestly think that it will cause any long-term negative effects. Um, and of course, you, you can work your own way out around that. Um, you know, you can adjust for your situation. But I did that for that entire year. And I started um, joining some acting classes. And then I started doing some really, really small plays and little improv comedy shows. And then I started doing uh, some non-union commercials and some music videos. I would just submit myself for these things online every single day. I got my headshots done. And then eventually, you know, I applied to about a hundred different agencies. One of them decided to meet with me. I had a meeting with them. I showed up prepared to the meeting. Um, It went well. So they signed me on. So now I had an agent. I built my website. Um, You know, I, I was always trying to find, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? I was trying to throw as much as I could on my plate because I knew that this was all I needed was one shot to go in. That's all I needed. I had to sink one shot. Um, So for me to do that, that meant take as many shots as you can take every single day. Um, So I was trying to get as many auditions as I could. I started doing plays. And then eventually I booked um, a starring role in this independent feature film. And I spent three months working on that. And the whole time I was kind of on and off with my classes. I was honestly failing pretty much every class, Um, you know, and I would have to go meet with professors and they would tell me, look, if you don't show up to class, you're going to fail. And I I had a weird piece inside of me that said, that's okay. Like, (laughs) this isn't my path anyway. I don't plan to do economics. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, that's another one of those things. I don't recommend this to people, you know, where sometimes people listen to a podcast like this and they're like, oh, wow, I'm so inspired. 
let me go drop out of college and just go for my business goals. Don't do that. <laughs> You'll know when the time is right. You will know when the time is mm -hmm. right. There will be no other option in your life. So do not do it until you have no other option. But, um, yeah, I so love that. I love that so much. I, I I'm going to cut you in real quick because yeah. I, I have met so many guys that, like younger, younger guys that are your age, you know, and they're coming across all of this inspiring uh, uh, self-development entrepreneurial type uh, content from like Gary Vee and Tony Robbins. And, you know, it's the superstar entrepreneur. It used to be like Michael Jordan, you know, back in the day. And now it's now yeah. it's like uh, Elon Musk or Richard Branson. Everybody wants to be like them. And I think, you know, what I've heard in conversations is, um, well, I just want to be successful, but I don't even know what I want to do. <laughs> right. And so mm. that is what you just said is so key, um, is to like, just have faith on the pa current path that you're on, that it's preparing you for when that inspiration hits, because when yes. you know, you will know, and like you're, I want to point out like what I'm hearing from you. This is honestly just so incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, but like what I'm hearing from you is that you had this vision, right? You had this dream. It was, you knew it was divine. And the difference between you who had everything going against you, you were like sleeping on the floor with $8 and change. Like you had nothing, no advantages. It wasn't like your dad was a, in the movie industry and he was like, here, William, here's a role for you. You know, like you mm -hmm. had to work for it and earn it yourself. And the only difference was that, um, you know, our thoughts become our feelings and our feelings become our actions. And your thoughts were, this is actually going to happen for me. And that those became your feelings. And those led to so many actions of you. It's the combination of faith and action that I'm hearing from you. You're like, what else can I do? How else can I serve? How else can I follow this intuition? I will do anything that you, you know, divine guidance that God asked me to in order to fill this. So um, you're absolutely right. I love, love, love that you are like, just wait. Because when you know, when it hits you and you know that it's like your divine mission in life, you will know, and it will lead to yeah. so much action. It's the path I'm on right now too. So I, I feel you so awesome. I love hearing this. So, okay, keep going, keep going <laughs> on your yeah, story. So, <laughs> um, so pretty much when, when you're not sure what the next step is, when you're not sure what that call is in your life. And I know sometimes people are like, well, I wish I had that one thing I was passionate about. You know, I, I wish since I was five years old, you know, I had this one dream and that's all I ever cared about and that I could go for it. That would be awesome. And all of us wish that all of us want that one thing that just fires us up inside. And it's just like, it, it's a burning, raging fire inside of you that, that fuels you. But the thing is, mm -hmm. I, I had to work to find that. So you will not yeah. find inspiration simply through sitting back and watching inspirational videos. The inspiration is always found through taking action. Action is the thing wow. that clarifies your path. So I've always thought of it as if, Let's say that you are uh, in a foggy forest or something like that, and you're trying to figure out your way out of there. Now, what you could do is you could, you know, just stay standing where you're at and just squint as hard as you can and hope that you'll catch a glimpse of an exit. Or what you can do is you can walk and walk and walk and try to find your way through that mist, and then eventually you will find your way out of there. And it's through the action that you finally gain clarity. Um, I always believe that God is on the side of people that take action and that create momentum in their lives. And you always start in suboptimal circumstances. Everybody starts that way. And what you have mm -hmm. to do then is if you want to find that purpose, if you want to find that calling, if you want momentum on your side, you have to do the best job you can where you're at with what you have, you know, with the work that you have laid out in front of you. So what I was doing at the time was I was trying to be the best economics student I could be. I was trying to do all of the right things for my internship. I was really, really building myself up in economics. So, um, you know, I, I didn't mention this, but at the time, like I had worked really hard to become president of our economic society and I was building my resume up and I was trying to create this great career for myself in the future. So I was not, you know, partying every weekend. I was not wasting time right. in college. I was not, you know, hoping that, you know, these great big breaks would come to me. No, I was, I was busting my butt to make an economics career happen. <laughs> because I did that, I realized that it wasn't for me. And that's what led to that moment of clarity where all of a sudden I found my way through the forest and I said, whoa, 
there it is. I can actually see the light. I know where to go now. And as soon as I saw that, I ran for it. Um, but you have to keep moving when you're in these periods of indecision, when you feel like you're surrounded by clouds and you don't have a clear purpose and you don't have clear things to work on. All you have to do is you sit down and you set a goal. Does not matter what the goal is. Pick the right goal for you at the time and start working on it. And everything will become clear over time and through action. So that's mm-hmm. that's kind of one of the things I want to say to to people that are in that period where they're you know constantly watching inspiration and motivation and um, they're really hoping that it just comes to them out of nowhere. It did not come to me out of nowhere. It came to me because I was putting in as much work as I possibly could in economics. And that's, that's where, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I think Jay-Z has this saying where, um, he says like you, when you're in the recording booth, you have to leave the door cracked to let God in, but you have to keep working the whole time. Um, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's really Mm -hmm. how I think it works. So yeah. So once, yeah, have you read, yeah, sorry. Have you read the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz? I have Have not. And that is like the number one book that I still need to read. Yeah, definitely. You will love it. That was my first big like breakthrough book on changing my paradigms. And um, one of the one of the four principles in that book is always do your best. And so that's exactly what you're saying right now. No matter what circumstance you find yourself in, always do your best. You're absolutely right. Because if you're doing your best in whatever, I don't care if it's, you know, like both of us, I'm sure, you know, we're not health professionals at some point. I would, you know, in college, I was working at a grill at my college, you know, in the dorms, you know, and I always did my best, no matter what in my, same as you always in my academics, in my family, in anything that I'm doing, I do my best. And when you're doing that, you realize whether you're hitting a dead end, right? Or we, yeah. or you'll have epiphany along the way. It wakes up a piff. It's. I love that you're pointing that out. Is that when you're taking that action and you are really, really trying, that's when the epiphanies come and they steer you in the right direction. Either this is not for you, or yes, more of this. This way, this way, this way. Keep going, pushing into that direction. So I love that. And now I like Jay Z a whole lot more too. That is really cool. <laughs> so thanks for sharing that one. <laughs> yes, it's. I I think that um. I love the idea of working to allow God to work in your life because, Mm. you know, God can try to hit you upside the head so many times with these different messages, but because you're not taking action in your life, you're not receptive to it. Um, But when you begin to take action, you know, they often say, if you want to get something done, give it to someone who's busy because someone who's busy, you know, is, Mm -hmm. is a doer, you know, they take action. So that's, that's one of those kind of mottos or philosophies that I try to live my life by. If I'm not sure about something, keep working. It's going to make sense later on. Don't sit and ponder the whole time. You know, sometimes you need to sit back and think about what you're doing. But once you arrive at a decision, start working on it. Um, you're mentioning the four agreements and I just wrote down, uh, that that's the next book that I'm going to read. One that I would like awesome. to recommend to your whole audience that to me, it was the culmination of everything in terms of success mindset philosophy um you know people talk about the law of attraction goal setting mm-hmm. all of those things combined into one it was a book by wallace d waddles called the science of getting mm-hmm. rich and mm-hmm. that book as soon as i listened to it it was just every single minute i was saying yes <laughs> i was saying whoa and uh, it was just it wrapped everything up together for me wallace d waddles yeah. essentially describes setting a vision, setting a goal, and working on it. And he explains the role that God will have in that. He explains how to move forward on that. Um, but it just really tied everything together for me. So I would, I would highly, highly recommend that to everyone. Okay, cool. That's I, that book is for me, like what the four agreements is for you. Like I've come across it. I'm actually doing like a seven month leadership course right now when they keep quoting Wallace D. Waddles in it. And I just haven't read that one. And I would say like, so for me, thinking grow rich is like <laughs> practically like a Bible for me, right? I read it yeah. all the time. And I would say one thing I didn't know before I went into entrepreneurship is that these books, even though yes, they're like thinking grow rich, the science of getting rich, what they're actually teaching is true principles for success in any area of your yes. life. And and how to start thinking like the 1%. How, it's like the secrets of, you know, it's like, you know, you might meet somebody who's like a billionaire, right? And you think, wow, like, I don't, I don't even know how they 
know how to do that. Like how are they, and, and these are, this is what those books teach. They get you, they, it's like the secrets, <laughs> the secrets to how yeah. the 1% of the earth think. And so it's, so it's, whether you're trying to get rich or not, I mean, this could even apply to like parenting or just like your little teeny job that you have in your cubicle, how to do better in that. It's amazing, like enlightened information. So yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm getting that like right now on my audible account. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Wallace um, I, models and, and uh, just real quick about that topic, um, Wallace D. Waddles in that book, it was actually the inspiration for Rhonda Burns and The Secret. And she said that that was the book that actually turned things around for her. Um, the, the interesting thing about that is that one of the major components of Wallace D. Waddles philosophy had to do with work. And one of the great quotes he said that um, I really remembered was, each day, do all that can be done that day. And he said, not rushing forward in a hasty manner, but doing all that you can effectively do each day, not leaving anything for tomorrow that could be done today. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like that was one of the areas that the secret did not touch on enough. Um, so I, I think this book really, really helps out with that as well. Wow. And I will add, I don't, I can't guarantee this will still be effective when this podcast comes out, but I just pulled it up on Amazon and the audio book is for real 66 cents right now. So I oh, am, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so heads up everybody. <laughs> Definitely get that book. Okay, cool. Yeah. I've heard, I've worked with so many like very highly successful people and Wallace C. Waddles is quoted all the time. So so thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you too, you talked about in your morning routine that part of it was carrying out the goals that you had set for yourself that day. So when do you set your goals for the next day? Like, do you do it before bed? Do you do it during that morning routine? Or how do you set your daily goals? I've, I've done both. Um, the vast majority of times I, I would do it at night. Um, and I would pretty much just sit down, think of where I'm at with my work and everything that needs to get done for the day. Um, and then I would write those down. I would, I would kind of source it from my weekly goals. I honestly, once I set a goal, I try not to look at my quarterly goals all the time. I try not to look at yearly goals or life goals or anything like that. Um, and a lot of people have different ideas about that. Some people love to think about their life goals every single day. But here's, here's how, how I'll explain that. Um, I have honestly at this point in my life allowed my life goals to be in flux. I am no longer attached and committed to these specific life goals that I set for myself when I was 21. And there's a reason behind that. The stuff that 21-year-old Will thought was cool, 60-year-old Will might not think is cool anymore. <laughs> and it would really <laughs> suck if I was still working on the same goals, trying to accomplish these. And you know, my sense of identity and, and my passion and purpose was all linked to these things that I thought would be cool to do when I was 21. You know, getting on a New York Times bestseller list and starring in these massive movies and things like that. So what I've really done is I've left that portion of my life to God. And I have a very clear sense of mission. And I also have a sense of vision about where I'm headed in the future. But I do not try to make that concrete. I allow a lot of flexibility with that. Now, where I get really specific I, mm -hmm. is with quarterly goals. So those are the little mm -hmm. guideposts that will guide you wherever, you know, God is guiding you in your life, wherever you are most called to serve where he can use you most effectively to improve people's lives and to serve. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's where I go with my quarterly goals. And it's usually based off intuition, but whatever I feel like is the logical next step for me in my growth. And usually it's something that scares me a little bit. That's outside of my comfort zone. That's what I will set as a quarterly goal for myself. Now that's all I focus on. You know, I, I don't even set yearly goals anymore. I just have that quarterly goal. And I will focus on that. I will break that down into um, what needs to get done each week. I will, you know, identify what sort of recurring actions need to be taken on a daily basis, as well as like one time things that I need to schedule into those weeks. And then once I'm planning at night, I just sit down. I look at what I've got going on for the week, as well as what I was doing, you know, throughout the day. And I will, you know, write those tasks down. I'll delegate anything that I can. I will, um, you know, push certain things into the future if I need to, but I will pretty much try to condense what has to get done tomorrow. Now, once I've done that, um, some of those are flexible. Some of those I get done, you know, whenever I can throughout the day. I like to use an app called Todoist. Um, and then some of those are scheduled and they need to get done at a certain time during the day. But overall, that's, that's pretty much how I do it. 
Um, nowadays, what I'm currently doing right now is I will just do that in about 15 minutes in the morning because I found when I do it at night, um, I'm honestly mentally just drained at the end of the day and I end up taking a long time to plan out my day. So I've just started taking about 15 minutes in the morning while I'm drinking my coffee and I'm getting ready to go to the gym. I'll just uh, constantly think about what can I do that day to accomplish my goals, what needs to get done, schedule it in, and then I just move right on with my day. Awesome. I love that. I love the quarterly goal thing because definitely what I have learned is that when you work so hard to develop a new habit and then your intuition is starting to pull you away from that new habit that you just worked so hard to ingrain into you. Like, let's maybe say it's uh, like lifting, right? Like you're going through this huge transformation and you're lifting and then your intuition is saying, hey, not so much of that anymore. Like you kind of did that, not so much. And that's something that I've been going through recently. And it's like, Oh man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I love this thing that I, this habit, you know, but it's, it was the pool for me this spring was get out in nature, get into the mountains here in Utah, get it, just be outside more, be outside more. And it actually became almost impossible for me not to listen to that. I almost didn't lift it all the whole months of um, May and June because I would go into the gym and it was so off. Like the vibration was so off with my soul that I, it was almost unbearable for me to be in there. My intuition mm. was just like, this is not the place for you right now. Um, and it's not to say the gym is bad. And I'm, you know, I actually have just started lifting again this past week. And I'm like, oh, this is super fun. And it feels right. It feels in vibration with me. But for some reason, for the transitions that I was going through the last couple of months, it just wasn't right for me. So I think like yeah. being willing to like listen when that new habit that you work so hard for, you, when your intuition, your God or guidance or the universe or whatever you believe in is shifting you away from that, being able to then say, all right. I will shift. Okay, I will do this. Um, and following your heart, that is so, so key. Or you just get stuck in these dead ends. You get stuck in these roads and you don't get that um, progress. You don't get that growth that you're looking for. So I love this quarterly goal idea that you're talking about. Um, another thing that you hit on was doing um, the delegation, right? And this is, um, I'm actually reading a book right now called The E-Myth. Have you read that? No, I have not read that. Okay. So this book was actually, rec I just went to a mastermind with, so like <laughs> being a health coach, sometimes you luck out because you get to train highly successful people. Um, and I went, was invited to this mastermind where everyone was way above my level, like just billionaires and investors and, you know, people running hundred million dollar companies. And it was amazing to be in their presence and see how they think, um, the energy, very, um, empathic people, very highly intelligent, um, very caring mm. all about bringing service to the world. Um, very much more about what others need than about what they want. And it was a beautiful experience. Um, and one of the guys there, his company is going very drastically from like 50 million to 500 million. So he's like in experience exponential growth. And what he recommended to me, um, he's, you know, somewhat mentoring me and he recommended to start with the e-myth and I'm reading this book and it's just like the biggest paradigm shift ever on the note of like, what the book talks about in a nutshell is that when we go into entrepreneurship, okay, so we're pursuing these goals. Like, let's say, you know, let's use the, um, I want to be, I want to have a bakery or whatever. Right. Yeah. So what, what we go into is then we become the employee. So it's like, and we become the, I forget the word they use, but like we become the worker. And so then we're just working all the time. So instead of going into it saying, I'm going to create a business that's sustainable. Um, and he hints at like, think of as if you were creating a franchise, Think as if you were creating a model, a system that is so beautifully set, like McDonald's did. He used McDonald's as an example. The system can then be franchised so that someone else knows that they could follow your exact model and have a seamless, beautiful um, experience that's guaranteed results, right? And so um, that's been mm -hmm. a big mind sh mindset shift for me because like, I think we're like, okay, work harder, do more. I got this, you know, and at some point we need to sit back and say, hey, you know what? Like, this isn't the way. Now I've just become an employee in my own business. You know, you, we hear people talk about work on your business, not in the business. And it's definitely a big switch because when you first start, it's like you have no choice. You are the only employee, you know? And so yeah. um, this book, I think you would really enjoy for that where you're at right now in your business or somebody who, you know, you've already been doing the work. You've got your morning routine down. You're going from like 4.30 to 11 p.m. You're, no, you're like <laughs> just doing everything you physically can. And then I think um, the mindset shift, it's been huge for me to know like, okay, now I'm actually creating a business. I'm no longer just an employee in my own. I'm not a worker, right? I'm creating something that I can help. To, and I think that's key 
in entrepreneurship because it is like when you're driven, like we are, it's very tempting to be like, I'll just keep going. I'll just drive harder. I'll just try harder, you know? And it's like, (laughs) um, what, what my intuition showed me in these two months of being in the mountains, um, I actually had a pretty spiritual experience. I was very overwhelmed coming home from paleo FX. I had like 10 clients I needed to make meal plans for and training plans. And then like all this stuff going with my digital business. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, like this is so much. And, um, I kept feeling my intuition say, go in the mountains, go in the mountains, go in the mountains. And I was like, no, I'm just trying to get out of work. I need to stay focused. I'm just trying to like escape or whatever. And it was all day long, go in the mountain, go in the mountain. And I was like, freak, okay, I'll go in the mountain. So I go drive, you know, it's five minutes from my house. I drive over to the mountains and I find this little tree to send under. And my intuition was just like, go up, 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 higher, higher, higher. And so I climbed up this big bouldery rock mountain thing. And I sat at the top and what came to me instantly was, you're working in your business instead of on your business. Who can you, who can help you start delegating? And just the ideas ideas just started flooding as I literally physically got higher and got some perspective and got out of the rut of like being in it, in it, in it, in it. You know, I just needed to step out and get some perspective. And what I'm hearing from you is that you do that quite often. You don't necessarily have to go sit on top of a mountain to do it, but you're sitting and thinking, Okay, with with a plan, with strategy. Okay, what can I do? Who else can do this for me? How can I make this easier? Um, my intuition was saying, like, take the easy way. So you don't have to work so hard. How can you make it easier? How can you make it easier? Right. So I think that's the transition we have to go through. Right. We have to go from waking up at eight thirty a.m. and casually showing up at work and <laughs> coming home and watching yeah. TV. You know, like there's there is an an essential part of the journey where you have to learn to work harder and put it in and get it. And then that's when you have to allow and sit back yes. and say, okay, now now I'm disciplined, but how can I make it easier? <laughs> yes, I I so agree with that. Um I, I was recently talking to somebody about this and I was saying basically you have to earn your team. You have to earn the right to delegate mm. things to others. And in the beginning, you know, maybe some people are listening to this and they're like, oh, great. Let me read the four hour work week and let me read these different mm-hmm. books that really emphasize not becoming the bottleneck in the whole operation. But the thing is, you really want to earn that right. The harder you work uh, and right. the more you do, you will become more capable of doing more. Um, and eventually you will hit a point where it is no longer serving your business for you to be, you know, the, the be all end all of every single action and to be a (laughs) micromanager. And once you hit that point, you'll feel it inside. You'll feel, okay, actually this is the lazy option. You know, just, just working myself to the bone is actually the lazier option. The harder option is to be smart and to train people (sighs) and to work with a team. And, um, for me, it's, I mean, it's a completely new experience. Um, now working with a team and, and working on my business with a team. And it's something I'm really, really enjoying, but it's a completely different skill set because I'm very used to being a bit of a drill sergeant with myself, but I realized that not right. everybody works that way. And I also realized that it's not even beneficial to me to work that way. Um, you know, it's right. It, it, it can be really bad. Like I've, I've had certain days where as crazy as this sounds, like I'll get up at 6 a.m. And I will just mentally berate myself and I'll be so upset that I didn't get up at 3.30 or I didn't get up at 3 and follow through on my routine. (laughs) Um, And it's like when you get to that level of extreme, um, you really have to sit back at a certain point and like shut that inner critic up and say, no, 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 no. I'm I'm an amazing person and I I needed a day of sleep and that's what it's going to be. So don't worry about it. And let's just continue right on. You know, maybe I maybe I needed that. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, um, yeah, there's, I, Ed Milet talks about, he's like, there's no such thing as balance, right? Uh, like at certain points, things are going to be off balance while you're working really hard on one goal. Other things will lack, right? We cannot do it all, but it's a matter of prioritizing our time and figuring out like, okay, once I've achieved that though, then letting it go and letting it take less time in our lives. And I think um, that's what I'm hearing from you. And I, I know you have to run, so I am going to, I'm going to close this up, but I just want to say like, 
thank you for setting an example of following your intuition, following your heart with so much courage. Like you really, truly, this is like, it, it, to me, it's an example of like a, the hero's journey. Absolutely. Um, and believing in yourself. And the biggest principles that, that I'm hearing and that I'm taking away from this is that you listen. First of all, you listen to that call. You didn't, you know, go back to your cubicle and say like, well, I had a crazy dream last night. A crazy me, silly me, right? Like you actually listened and honored your heart. And then you put in all the action and you're continually listening. You're, you're welcoming in these gifts from, from God. God, um, from the universe into your life and saying, okay, okay, I'm listening. I will do. And then this is what happens. This is amazing. You're 24 years old and look what you've accomplished already. And honestly, listening to you, William, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am imagining you like 30 years from now, probably listening back to all your content online from, you know, when you were 24. And I know you're going to be like, wow, dang, I was pretty good. I was only 24. That's pretty awesome. So I just, I cannot, I cannot wait to see where your journey takes you from here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing, sharing this with us. Well, th thank you so much. And I have to say, I am so amazed at how in tune you are with just the divine and with God's voice in your life. Like you are incredibly in tune with that. And that takes a whole lot of skill actually. Like it, it is a skill to be able to operate at that level. Um, you know, people talk about vibrations and if you're rolling your eyes right now thinking, you know, oh, that's, that's so, uh, you know, airy fairy. This, this is very real, very concrete stuff. And in my mind, yes. there's literally no amount of faith needed for this. Um, it makes complete sense to me. The one thing I want to say to anyone who's listening to this right now and thinking that uh, Tara or myself are the exception to the rule or that this doesn't apply to you or that it would be nice if I could do that. But, you know, but my family, but my health, mm -hmm. but my cir uh, circumstances or my situation. Look, you would not be on this earth if that seed didn't exist inside of you. Every single person is put on this earth with a seed inside of them of something that they are supposed to contribute to the world. Now, not everybody's going to be the president. Not everybody's going to be, you know, Mr. Number One of whatever it happens to be, but everybody has a purpose inside of them that if they fulfill it, if they carry it out, if they water that every single day, they will be deeply fulfilled and they will serve the world in the best way possible. So if you are listening to this right now, the only thing that maybe sets me and Tara apart from anybody else is the fact that when we had that scary moment late at night where you're thinking, Holy crap, I really want to do this, but you know, do I do it? Do I go the safe route? Do I trust myself that I'll be mm -hmm. successful? When we had that terrifying decision that you have to make all alone and it's quiet and there's no one around you, we said mm -hmm. yes and we swallowed the fear down and we went for it and we also toughed out the tough times. Once you mm -hmm. say yes to that decision, that's where everything transforms after that. You know, and if you're a week into that yeah. or a year into that and you're wondering where are the results in my life, keep going. OK, so this this is not you say yes to it. And then the next morning, you know, the sun is out and it's beautiful. And all of a sudden you've got a check in the mail. It does not work that way. You know, the, the storm might come right after you say yes to that decision. And you might think, damn, why did I listen to that podcast that got me all pumped up and motivated? And, and then I made this decision to go for my dreams and. Look what happened to me now. Like, this is what they told me would happen. No, you, you have to stick with this thing. You really, really have to stick with it. And at the end of the day, remember that you will eventually be on your deathbed. Life, you know, comes to an end at a certain point. And when you're at that point, I think you'll look back and realize that you could have done anything that you wanted to achieve in life. Um, so really, really don't shortchange yourself on that. You know, like there's no reason to be playing it safe. When at the end of the day, you have to return this life that you borrowed. So I would say go for it. Oh, man. And yes. And then when you say yes, make sure you don't have a 20% no in there. That was in me for a yes. long time of, okay, I'm going to try this like fitness thing and be coach, but 
but you know, I can always like go back and be a teacher if this doesn't work out, <laughs> right? That that 20% was um, absolutely, it was the killer of my dreams of having a way out, right? So once you say yes, like it's gotta be a full on, yes, I will do whatever it takes. Like the Imagine Dragon song, I love that song carried yes. me through my tar hard times. It was like, I will do whatever it takes to fulfill this divine call that I feel in health and fitness. And it's just been not easy, not easy at all, super scary, but it's been amazing and fulfilling. And I know that I'm being supported on my journey. And the more that I listen, the more synchronicities keep happening. And it's just like this beautiful, magical, scary, but amazing journey. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, where, where can people, where do you want people to come find you? Where's the best places? Um, I'm probably most active, honestly, on Instagram. That's at William Shufelt, okay. S-H-E-W-F-E-L-T. Um, the other thing that I'm really excited about is the Will to Win podcast that I've been working on recently. Um, this is honestly just a, a place for me to express my mind, what's, what's on my mind, what I'm thinking about. Um, so that's been something I've been working on lately as well. And YouTube is the next area that I'm just going to be pushing heavily on. Um, so I'm going to be really, really focused on YouTube. If people want to check that out, that's youtube.com slash Will Schufelt. Awesome. Will Schufelt. Okay, cool. I will Will subscribe Schufelt, right yes. now. I'm Okay, cool. I'm working on YouTube too. We are on a similar journey, my friend. It's awesome to be able to talk to you and get it. to hear a little bit more of the heart of what's going on behind everything you're doing. Now it all makes sense. It all makes sense. So <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Tara. 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 Awesome. Thank you very much, Tara.